Wars trilogy considered a classic? <laughs> We're glad you asked. This is The Right Perspective, the podcast where we review and discuss TV shows and films that are considered classics by the world or by one of us. And then we decide whether it is actually worthy of the title of classic. Today, we are going to discuss the original Star Wars trilogy. And at the end, we will decide whether it gets zero, one, two, or three lightsabers. Bro, kick us off. Yes. Now, my first question that I have for you all is how in the world did you make it to 2020 <laughs> and never seen Star Wars? I just, I just, I just don't understand. So I want to unpack that first before anything we talk about. Well, I, I'm happy that you started with an insulting. Yeah. No, I mean, I yeah. Because, because yeah. I can now yeah. say I can yeah. now, I was yeah. actually I was actually cueing you to introduce yourself. So yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Her name. Oh, I'm sorry. They they got an introduction because you want us to first unpack the judgment. Just cancel this whole thing. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Because yeah, I'm you, not you, gonna deal with that attitude. Right, <laughs> I'm not gonna just, deal with that. Can, can I can <laughs> I just can I just say to everybody in in podcast <laughs> slam that, well, that is not Janaya, right. Oh, the nerve! <laughs> Janaya did give me instructions, and I messed up on the instructions, and it's it's not her fault, uh, you know. But mm, what, what I what I would like to oh, do. Oh God! It's rarely is wanna, my fault. I think we I can wanna, all agree it's usually not my fault. <laughs> all right, listen. I want to go back to as if you just said, Aubrey, start off. And yeah. I'm going to start off from that moment. And what I'm going to say is, is my name is Aubrey Wright. I am the oldest, uh, the first, and the best child mm -hmm. out of the Wright trio. Mm -hmm. And I love movies, and I love uh, television shows as well. And uh, my sister- I love Long Walks on the Beach. My, this is my time, my time. <laughs> My time. And my sister told me <laughs> to say something profound, but I don't have anything because I just like TV and movies that are awesome. And mm -hmm. everything I like tends to be awesome. So that is my introduction. Thank you for really following the very <laughs> minimal format that you came up with <laughs> for this podcast. <laughs> Uh, I am Janiah Wright. I am the middle child. And as you can see, I've been sworn. I've been sworn <laughs> <laughs> for as long as I can remember at the hands of these two. You know, life for me ain't been Poor unfortunate soul. Okay, because you know what? Every single time, all I'm trying to do is to make a helpful contribution. <laughs> and Aubrey is full of judgment and disdain okay <laughs> and Brittany is just poking holes so that's where i am <laughs> you're not even following your own rules you're supposed well, to say, i'm, I'm you're thrown to, off you're trying to say you're supposed to say you're supposed to say what i'm thrown what off kind, what what kind of movies you like and what it takes yeah to, okay good. yeah i know so this will say I, what it takes to get to get your vote yes a movie will get a lightsaber from me if, if it is, if it has a complete story. I hate when a movie has like so many holes in it that you have, you have to make so many leaps to be able to follow the storyline. And I also like to have complete characters. I hate when it's just like a, like a, like a, you know, two dimensional character. And it's like, you know, we don't get a sense from the way that they're t storytelling uh, of the depth of this person's life and experience. So I need to understand the character and I need a nice, well-rounded story. If, if these movies can accomplish that, they will get a lightsaber from me. Well, you always got to overachieve. <laughs> Listen, she sense. loves certificates. I do, I do. <laughs> and I have several. And I have yeah, several. She, loves, she, loves, she does love certificates. She probably yeah. wants a certificate at the end of this podcast. I've already printed it. I mean, <laughs> we ain't got one. 
I'm printed it already. I'm going to sign it for myself because I would never expect either of you to give me the recognition I deserve. So you're right. I will issue my own certificate oh my as usual. As All usual, right. I have to do everything. <laughs> okay. um hey everyone <laughs> i am Brittany. uh i am the youngest i'm Brittany wright the youngest of the three and i am here because the first two were like oh that one was okay that one was all right but now we've finally fixed it and we have Man, this, this podcast is real aggressive and man. so <laughs> I think you started it as usual. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You Everything's did. Everything's always fine. And as and our per usual, over. I'm finishing it. Okay. Hello. All right. Hello. All right. Um, I, <laughs> for me, I love movies and I love TV. I love these these types of things. My siblings know I can watch the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah, you need like and, 25 overs. <laughs> Did you just be watching stuff over and over? And yeah. beyond. Yeah. The infinity and beyond. And um, I have no issue because I will laugh at them or cry at them or be upset with them as if it's the first time I've watched it. So, yeah, a lot, of pe- a lot of people say Good Burger is, is, is better. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> and it was a pivotal part of the culture. Okay. Yes. We're going to have to do that movie at some point. Exactly. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use my older sibling <laughs> veto powers. <laughs> that Does he I still inst- think he has veto powers? It doesn't work here. That I, that I instituted myself. They have never. It doesn't work here. <laughs> ever. It never worked. works. It never works. They have so, never worked. Based off how I watch television, um, it has to really give me a feeling. Mm, okay. Sure. How I feel. Mm-hmm. about it what it what roller coasters does it take me through does it keep my attention the entire time that i'm watching whatever it is mm-hmm. that is how i base my judgment when i am watching uh movies so it's good and also i judge it off of did i feel the time you know sometimes you can watch something you're like i know i watched that for an hour oh my goodness mm. my eyes are about to oh, fall out my head time. Time. Well, Janiah, since I know you like to write notes. uh, Oh, I I have four pages of notes. (laughs) Per movie. Per movie. I have four pages of notes for each movie in the trilogy. What I would like you to do is, man, you talk so long, you've messed up my whole... Oh, no. What I would like you to do is... Me, uh, first of all, all of you took the same amount of time. Thank you very much. No, 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 no. I'm saying, Janiah, see, you're so sensitive. (laughs) You don't even know when I'm talking stuff on you. I'm talking stuff on Janiah right now. Because I yeah. and just, like, just, just like usual, I was trying <laughs> to give you some respect <laughs> and some adoration over an idea that you just said that I thought was really good. Because I think the concept of, of time feeling is a good thing that we should oh. talk about. Mm-hmm. from time Thank to time you. when it comes to movies and I think that should be a term and I just wanted Janai to take a note but as Thank usual you. you overreacted Done. prior prior it's fine. to even, even you know what? it's okay it's okay because sometimes my greatness overwhelms me as well and I forget that it overwhelms my siblings at times Okay. My my apologies, brother. Well, uh, I, I don't think say... I don't think I don't think I don't think I have the bandwidth for all this ego. I just let you know that right now. And to... I'll buy you a new band. I'll buy you a new band. I feel just like Luke Skywalker. <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to get into. With we're going. We're going to get. We're, we're going to get into. His father had a right, dark side. Okay. okay. All right. Good. Good. All he wanted to do. Was right. to love him. That all is right. all so, that he wanted. So, so, so this, That's this all he wanted, wanted was to dance listen, with my father my again. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I look. I this is. I'm very much looking forward to hearing all of your thoughts. And before we get to those, I definitely want to know how you made it as we go full circle. 
to uh, the older siblings talking point as as we normally should. <laughs> but no, okay, seriously. When when <laughs> how did you make it to to twenty twenty without seeing uh, uh, without seeing uh, uh, Star Wars? Well, you know, the thing about not being a lame is that oh, um, <laughs> perfect uh, to start. Is that there are things, no. Think about you know having what? friends. You know what's so crazy? It's, it, it's just one of those things. I, the, the Star Wars films are so much a part of our culture. They're so much a part of our culture that I, I have felt like a closeness and like an affinity for these movies but it's never been based on actually experiencing them so it's the crazy Ooh, it's so like crazy. it's like there's so much a part of you know whatever it is to i guess be an 80s baby and mm -hmm. you know that kind of thing so i respect the movies you know but i just i don't know how it happened i i've never i never saw them until we, we took it on just you know in the last week yeah. what about you Britt? You know, I that was going to be my first thing I was going to say because no, I, I mean, if it's ditto, it's just ditto, you know. I, I had friends, no, but no, but I honestly think it was because I've never been like a, a sci fi person, mm -hmm. I've never been someone that's just like, oh my god, the next superhero movie is coming out. The next sci-fi anything is coming out. I've never been that type of person. Mm -hmm. um, I never just not liked it. I just never been a, a big on sci-fi. So I think that's honestly why I never saw Star Wars. It, it was never, but like Janaya was saying, when people would talk about Darth Vader, I knew who that was. Oh yeah. When people, you know, would mention Chewie, I knew what sound Chewie would make. You know what I mean? So you don't you don't realize you're so far removed until you're like, oh, oh yeah, I've never seen it. Mm -hmm. and I um, I just I just want you guys to know. I just thought of a really good question that I'm going to ask you guys later <laughs> on in this podcast. Oh gosh, really, that means really, that means it's working. They, we were like, yeah, let's I, not overly script. Let's just yeah, see how yeah, things I, I come got, up. I, yeah. Good. I, I, I got I like it. I like um, it. All right. Now, before we Although get. Although I have but, overly scripted, I have come up with dozens. No, I have some <laughs> other, <laughs> but I just came up with a good one. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So, anyway, uh, now I really feel like, and somehow we title this that it's going to speak to people who haven't seen Star Wars, which boggles mm -hmm. my mind. But I feel like this would be um, a place to put a spoiler alert and also, but to also hear a synopsis. And as the resident Star Wars fan in this trio of awesome siblingness, what I would like to hear, um, Janine, I know you have notes for, Tons. for all. Tons. Brittany, Brittany, do you think you could especially since we watched this together, do you think that you could um, summarize Empire Strikes Back? Oh, absolutely. That's okay, all right. so, so this episode would, five, if, right? Yes. So if you are okay with this, this is what I would like to hear. I would like to hear Janaya give us a synopsis on New Hope. Okay. We could talk about it. Mm -hmm. Brittany gives a synopsis on Empire Strikes Back. And we could talk about it quick, you know, quickly. And then Janiah will talk about, talk, uh, give a synopsis of Return of the Jedi. And then we could talk about the whole overarching thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, what do you guys think about that? I have to tell you, I love that structure. I will also say that I am not prepared for that because all of the movies have become one big hodgepodge in my mind. It's the uh, thing I was. Okay, okay, well. <laughs> and, all right, so and, for, and I would literally have to, like, I'm no, no, no. pulling yeah, up enough, my notes because. Enough, enough, enough said, enough just said, enough to keep said. it real, like, listen, listen, I can't look, remember where one stop. To, to everybody who's listening, <laughs> okay. My sister, Janiyah, 
I would call her like classical music. She is very planned. Oh, Every, that's beautiful. Everything. And I almost took her out of her comfort zone. <laughs> Listen, uh, her, her CPO3, what's his name? <laughs> and see, then we have my other sister, who is, I'm going to say she's like jazz. Equally beautiful, but it's unexpected. You don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> I give mean, it a bop bye. <laughs> exactly. There we go. All right. So, oh, and, that, and this, this was also, this was, this, <laughs> oh, <laughs> give it a bop bye. Bop, 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 bop. And, they, and, and they, and they mix, they mix so wonderfully. Um. So, so listen. I'm sorry for taking us off script. Let's return I just to the script. I just, Anaya, I just didn't give know. Us, did. Please give us the the we are discussing today Star Wars the original trilogy. Yes. Episodes four, five, and six. And Janaya, please give us a synopsis of the original Star Wars trilogy. I'm on the edge of my seat. Yay! Okay. So <laughs> Oh, can so, I give a, can I give her opening music to it? Please do. That'll help me. In five, six, seven, eight. Dun 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 dun. dun. <sighs> you know, I, here's the thing. <laughs> I, I don't I don't blame Britain. I don't blame Britain. I, bl I blame us. <laughs> so let's just go. Let's go. Okay. So. <laughs> The original Star Wars trilogy. These films center on the war. But it's actually, it's called the Galactic Civil War. And it is between the uh, Rebel um, Alliance, which those are the good guys, and the Galactic Empire, those are the bad guys. And a group of warriors called the Jedi fought to stop the evil empire. And they were all but wiped out, except for basically, a, you know, a, a small handful remain. Um, there are two that are really critical to this story. The first is Anakin Skywalker. Uh, he died, quote unquote, died um, fighting uh, in this war. And there's another, Obi-Wan Kenobi, who is alive, but he is not actively fighting because he is old and he's tired. And the Jedi are special because they are warriors that use the force. Well, what is the force? The force is another one of those things that I had a sense of already before I watched the movie. But mm -hmm. the, movie was, the movies were so good in, 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 in flushing out. The force yep. is what gives a Jedi his power. This is actually a quote. I think it was from the New Hope. Um, it was from when Obi-Wan Kenobi was explaining the force. He said it's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us it binds the galaxy together. And eventually, through a series of events, the son of Anakin Skywalker, one of the best Jedis that ever lived, his name is Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker ends up being called into action to follow in his late father's footsteps to become a, Je a Jedi. He is basically called to join the Rebel Alliance and to fight the Galactic Empire. And along the way, he joins forces with others who have who helped him um, to become a Jedi and along his journey, to, you know, through his to his destiny. One person is Princess Leia. She is a leader of the Rebel Alliance. Another person, Han Solo, he is like a rogue kind of guy um, who, you know, he, he ends up coming reluctantly, um, but ends up being, being very critical to ultimately the success of the Rebel Alliance. Chewbacca, who is actually not human. He is a, he's, a, he's from a, um, a race called Wookiees. And then there were two droids, C-3PO and R2-D2. And of course, the whole gigantic Rebel Alliance, they are a well, pretty well-resourced you know, Rebel group. Um, and they are all fighting against the, the evil empire headed up by the emperor, who is, frankly, he's using the force for evil. <laughs> you know, this is how, this is how, because you, you start to think, well, if the Jedis have the force, well, why aren't they just, why does this trilogy even exist? 
because the Jedi's have the force. That's all living things working in tandem. How can anything be thwarting their victory? Well, guess what? You can use the force for evil. You really can. Mm. And that's what the Galactic Empire was doing. Mm -hmm. And they were led by the Emperor. And also Darth Vader was a lord, a very, he was, you know, right-hand man to the top evil guy. Okay? So, come to find out okay. that, that Darth Vader is a former Jedi. He wasn't always on the dark side. The dark side coerced him. Mm. He was enticed by the dark side. And guess what else we find out? Darth Vader is actually Anakin Skywalker. He is Luke Skywalker's father. So this whole trilogy is basically Luke Skywalker's hero journey. And guess what? His ultimate challenge before him is to either kill his father as evil Darth Vader or turn his father back to the good side of the force. And he does manage to turn his father back to the good side for just a skosh of time, just a little bit of time, just a few minutes. It was not long enough for Darth Vader not to perish in this war. He did die, but, but, and so did the emperor, emperor gone, okay, but, <laughs> Before Darth Vader died, he did come back to the good side for just a little while, enough for Luke to, to have his Jedi-ness reinforced and his faith that good can always win and conquer reinforced. Mm. And so, yes, the Rebel mm. Alliance, by the end of the third movie, that Rebel Alliance, as far as we can see, they have taken that galactic empire out. Mm. Okay? And they have been working on it for multiple movies. Okay, but by this point, they then took, took them out. And why were they so powerful? Well, guess what? It wasn't just Luke that had the force. Somebody else in that Rebel Alliance had the force. And she didn't even know it. Guess who it was? It was Leah. Because guess what? Leah is Luke's, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, his sister. So little did she know, she was also on her hero's journey to 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 learn that she has the force at her disposal and that she ultimately was on a quest to kill her own father she ain't even know she ain't she even know yeah she ain't even know so that is essentially the the arc of the movie in the end the the rebel alliance has defeated the galactic empire that was they were just awful oh all they wanted to do was to just take over everything, have all the power, kill all the people uh, and non-people, and the Rebel Alliance won. So now I can tell you that I've been watching Star Wars for my entire life, and I think I enjoyed that synopsis more than any any time <laughs> I've watched any movie related to the Star Wars franchise. <laughs> You just you create it was almost three D in the way that <laughs> yes that that I, I'm fully immersed. <laughs> I was I was on the edge of my seat like I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> now I will say it is Princess Leia, not Leah. Oh, she and struggles with names every now and then. Well, where I am, and, and from where well, that's how we pronounce it. Where I <laughs> where I'm from, I respect that you have other pronunciations. And it's. Wookie, not Wookie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But other than that, it was spot right. on uh, it was description. Spot on. Yay! And, and Yay, just, notes. And I, I'm just so excited. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, yeah, and you definitely, definitely uh, took very meticulous notes as well. And <laughs> I'm sure you're probably going to turn it into yourself and grade it. And give it back to yourself. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Okay, so I I'm very excited to be seeing this movie through your eyes, both of you, because it makes me feel like I'm watching it for the first time again mm. through your eyes. It's kind of like, and we're not going to get off on a tangent here, but when we when you first were started watching Game of Thrones, both of you. I still have every text that you sent to me, <laughs> screenshot and saved in a folder. We'll we'll probably 
at some point talk about it yeah, that was uh, or, 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 the, or the show. But I'm just saying it was enjoyable for me seeing you go through it. So I, I am enjoying it. So, um, I mean, what did you guys think about, about Star Wars? This is your first exposure, 40 years in. This month is the 40 year anniversary of mm. Empire Strikes Back, which is mm -hmm. the best Star Wars movie. I'm probably going to get mm. for that from a small group of people. To me, it is the best. Definitely my favorite. Wow. But, yeah, yeah. but all right. So what? So so what did you guys think? I liked it. I liked it a lot. I, I have to say, I I I didn't expect to. I I, I knew that I would respect it because mm -hmm. it is because. It, but I actually enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. Did you enjoy it, sis? I did enjoy it. But I will tell you, I still don't understand why this is something that has a 40 year anniversary. <laughs> I don't, why are we still celebrating this movie? I feel like it was really good and I enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to watching the other episodes because now I want to see what happens. But I was like, huh, that wasn't a waste of time but I don't think I'd watch this every year that it came out or but just, sis, you just <laughs> celebrate said, it. But you just said it hooked you in enough that you want to watch the other movies. So but how can that's you because that those, but, then, <laughs> but then say that it like didn't quite do it for you? I want to watch them because I know that they're available. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not... It's like I have to finish out the story. Yeah. Like I, you know, it's not like- That's you started. Yeah, yeah, you know, I need to- sure. Oh, you came out with other episodes and we started in the middle of the story, four, five, and six. Well, hell, I need to see one through three and the other <laughs> ones at the end. Cause you're telling me there's more to the story. Oh so. man, Britt, this is bananas. I really enjoyed the- <laughs> Because you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I uh -huh. like I like there I, I, I'm not a person that, that sits around and says, Oh, look at that movie, like using all these common movie tropes. I don't mind a good old use of, of known movie tropes. I mean what 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 what, what movie doesn't. trope what I movie don't. trope what movie trope can you think of in, in oh, English? Oh, oh, oh. I I well, wanna put out here before she makes her statement that every year she swindles me into watching Hallmark and Lifetime Christmas movies that all not... have the same theme. Every last one of them. Yeah, yeah. So, so I so want to put that out there. Yeah, because so you, it's you, saying you, the you truth, mean, that the only mean, way to find your soulmate, which is someone you actually went to high school with, is to go back to a small town over the holidays and meet him and fall in love. Duh! <laughs> it's good. It's all, it's and I will watch it every winter 20 times. So... It sounds, like, it sounds like there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot of quality a different, a different. programming to unpack. But, uh, and Brittany tried to distract us, but I will just say, uh, Britt, because she was getting told off. That's why she, she's trying to distract. Because the trope, <laughs> the trope that, that is just the obvious one is just the hero story. You know, the hero's, the hero's journey. The hero's journey. It's like, okay, I'm just like a guy working in the field, but I happen to be an excellent pilot. I don't know why. And oh, oh my gosh, it turns out I'm a Jedi? No, I don't want to be a Jedi. I don't accept my destiny. <laughs> oh, wait, I <laughs> to force me into, and if, you know, confronting my destiny, whether I want to or not. Oh, now I'm in here. I'm invested. The whole world is relying on my shoulders. I still have mixed emotions. Can I do it? I must. Oh, let me go to my peers. Oh, look, people are rallying around me. I have the support I need. I have the powers I need. I will win. And that is the hero's journey in Janiyah's speech. And well, that's what I, I love. I, I, and that's what this was. It was good. Well, um, it sounds to me like some white supremacy, but that's fine. <laughs> OK, now that, that, that's an interesting. OK, so. <laughs> Now I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not necessarily <laughs> going with you. I just. I just want you to connect the dots for me, so I can flow on the. Okay, 
Luke Skywalker and Han Solo were not the only two fighting that battle, and they both mm. got awards. What about Chewie? That was messed up. Chewie didn't get no award. I was like, really? Was so because black. most of us don't know what he's saying. Because <laughs> he needs a little extra assistance. That's no, your this, best this, friend, Han Solo. The only so... person that I like you. That's, I had the same thought. Ooh. He was standing up there. Same thing with the droids. Oh, they can they can help, but they can't get a little sticker. Can I get a can I get a smiley face? Well, can I, I? I I I definitely. This is why I love this because it's interesting because most people have forty years to mull over these. Uh, these, these, these questions. <laughs> and basically, in, in Star Wars, you have the expanded universe and you have canon, which canon is which actually is the storyline that they're following. So hmm. there's a lot of different uh, media out there that Star Wars media, quote unquote, but it's not uh, considered to be part of the actual timeline that's going on. So I'm not going to go too far ahead in the actual canon timeline because I know eventually we're going to get to all sections yeah. of, of these movies. But one thing I can say is the reason that was given um, for that is that that metals don't mean anything to his culture. So that's to, to Chewbacca's culture. So that's mm -hmm. the that's the reason that was given mm -hmm. later on. Now obviously oh, all you all I heard you say was let's justify why. Oh you're gonna add, <laughs> Oh there's gonna be no, a lot of that. No no, no uh, just, I, I wanna just say that they said let's justify why we well, forgot well, about him. Well what then <laughs> is the Wookiee version of a medal and why didn't he get it? Answer so, that not, one, bro. Answer <laughs> that one. Was it, was it snacks? He didn't have was it, anything. Was it that little belt thing he wears around his chest that doesn't do nothing? He already had that. <laughs> okay, now now listen, Chewbacca's belt has uh, meaning and it does stuff too. It has tech, it's a weapons belt, okay? What? I didn't see him pull one weapon off of there, all three of those movies. Well, I'll tell you what To me, it was just a fancy accessory to a fur coat. Yeah, I'll tell you what weapon wasn't wielded. It was a weapon of fairness to make sure he got an award. Huh. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, That's, so it's a, I, I will definitely, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going Somebody to, needs a Brittany, belt with that in it. Brittany is very, obviously very passionate about this. And we're, we're not voting yet. We're not going to vote to the end. But okay. I, I am curious about things that made it lean towards iconicness or not. Sure. And you're saying, this is one thing I feel like both of you, uh, it's a very serious point that Chewie didn't get a medal or the equivalent thereof nope. to celebrate the victory of blowing up the Death Star at the end of A New Hope. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these, were, these were both ticks in the non-iconic column for both of you, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. I, I guess what makes it yes non-iconic would be just that it just seemed like an interesting, fun sci-fi movie. Not something that I would see as defining um, cent um, not century, decades. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't see it defining to Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, oh. I'm, I, I'm talking about that specific moment. Oh, like, okay. like, like we're, 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 we're talking, you know, because yeah. obviously, as you're watching the movie, yeah. there are things that make you yeah. excited. Yeah. Things, that, things that, so I'm saying for both of you, that's a negative tick in that. It was a yes. negative tick. Yes. Okay. It was. Okay. All right. Yes. Well, I'll tell you that. That's, first of all, Janiah, that is the ending of the first movie, the, A New Hope. That is where A New Hope ends. That's right, because so, so, they're so at the, the discriminat discriminatory award ceremony. That's right. The, <laughs> the discriminatory, okay. The, the exactly, discriminatory exactly. Award, award ceremony. So, That's right. uh, so from th the whole basic premise of this movie is Princess Leia uh, was getting these plans to them so that they could ultimately blow up this Death Star and 
which is a gigantic moon sized ship battle station right. battle station that could just take out a whole planet Le right. legitimately which it did which, which it, it did, did. Well, which, which was did. princess leia's planet and she went like this oh. okay yeah all right, all right, all right. before <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks, yes, I want both of your reactions. I, I had another general question, <laughs> but I want both of your reactions to her reaction when her planet, Alderaan, got blown up. What, sure. what, what were your reactions to that? L listen, to her reaction. Listen here. Princess Leia is what women have to be in the workplace. Oh, mm. my God. <laughs> okay. I'm so happy I asked Women in the workplace, we cannot show quote unquote emotion. No. Nope. Oh because we are now characterized as a stereotype. Yeah. Oh, you're too emotional. So I'm emotional if I'm angry, but a man is passionate if he's <sighs> angry. You yeah. got Darth Vader walking around here, everybody's scared of him. And every time you say anything you don't like, he chokes somebody to death. But that's okay. not emotional. But that's not emotional. That's not emotional. Oh, uh -huh. I didn't kill the person the first time you told me to kill him. Oh, now I'm dead. Now I'm suffocating on the floor. Mm -hmm. But that's not emotional. But that's not emotional. Princess Leia, her whole family died in one zap. Yep. She had to internalize that. And I'm pretty sure if they got therapy on whatever planet she landed on, she would have to go. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So you so you agree. So you agree with how she reacted? Yes, she had to. She had she to. had to. You but too, also because her father probably taught her how to be diplomatic. She's a princess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's a little something at play here. Mm-hmm. Speak on it. And Brittany and I have talked about this quite a bit recently. At length. It's a little something called beast mode. Uh, okay, and I learned about it on uh, Instagram. And what beast mode is? Beast mode is educate the man. Listen, I, I I I will, I will, because mm -hmm. you know, like this, in addition to your extremely valid point, how do I know mm -hmm. valid? Oh, I'm living it. Okay, mm -hmm. so you cannot express your feelings or react because people will call you emotional as a woman. But yep. the other thing is when you are focused on your grind and I'm clapping people can't I don't know if you can if it's if it's picking up on the microphone because I'm clapping for emphasis okay <laughs> your grind okay <laughs> you cannot be deterred when you in beast mode okay Hello. so all right okay so my whole planet got exploded whatever I got things I got to do Okay, I got things I got to do. You blew up the planet, but you won't get to the other planet. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, I thought, well, you know what? Way to stay focused, girlfriend. Way to stay focused. Mm -hmm. With them two little can... honey but them two honey buns sitting on the side of your head. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of pressure. That's a buns that's of a... focus. Focus bun. <laughs> focus <laughs> bun. Beast mode bun. Beast mode bun. <laughs> Girl, there was some hashtag, beast mode buns. Hashtag beast mode buns. Yeah. So, yes. so, so, so listen, can mm -hmm. I just tell you that that is a part of me watching this movie in 2020. And I, I, I don't want us to start getting political and all that kind of stuff. But um, one thing that I did enjoy about Princess Leia and even her in moments like that and how she was through the entire movie like when um, she was, when she stepped up uh, and you saw her handling the blasters for the first time when yep. she was rescuing the- um, Doing uh, whatever needed to be uh, done. Also, also Hello. And, and, but the thing that I loved about it even more now than I always have is that they weren't putting an emphasis on the fact that she was a woman, which I feel like sometimes gives a disservice because uh, it's like, no, this was just an amazing character. It wasn't surrounded by the fact that, you know, she was a woman. She's just, and uh, in a lot of movies I see nowadays, they try to put so much of uh, emphasis on that that I feel like it kind of loses the message a little bit. You uh, know what? This, 
Bro, I have to disagree with you. Mm -hmm. I have to disagree with you because I think if they really truly were not overemphasizing her womanness, they wouldn't have had to put her in a love triangle. Mm. Having her kissing who ultimately becomes her brother and Han Solo mm. and, and her and Han Solo flirting. I mean, oh. as long as you, okay. you know, it's, it's, it's having. Yeah, let's talk about that toxic relationship. Yeah. And then when she got, when she got captured by um, Java, the, <laughs> the, the, <sighs> what is he? They called him the Hun. Java the nasty. Hun. Yeah. Java the stank. Yeah. Job of the booger. He was slimy and gross. Yeah. But and when she got captured by him, he basically put her in a bikini and draped her across his lap. So I'm sorry, bro. I mean, I kind of okay, feel I, like well, 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 she I, was the, a woman. Now, okay. Yeah. What the, the movie you're talking about is Return of the Jedi, which for many reasons, which we'll get into. Um People have a lot of issues with those movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the metal bikini, for example, is one of the things that's most loved and hated. Yeah, it's in unnecessary. Terms, in but um, but what I'm talking, I was in this particular context, and I'm just saying if it if it changes anything that you're saying, let's say that you only saw a new hope from the point where, you know, because in that movie really the only way you see leia is by being you know the she's basically the 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 you know the badass of the movie yeah and so so do you still do you feel that way and you made just some amazing points just let me say that but do you feel that way just about the overall trilogy or does that movie were you feeling that way at the end of A New Hope? Can, 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 you, can you remember how you felt? You know, I think, end? I think, I think that I, if I were to just say, like to speak to my, my, my overall feelings about Leia, I, res I, I, I have respect and appreciation for the character. Mm -hmm. I really do. I mean, she was, she really was mm -hmm. in beast mode. She truly was doing what needs to be done. She had that kind of dogged determination of oh there's a need i'm gonna fill it she was raising her hand she could have sat back and been the princess just orchestrating no she was out in the street taking yeah. down the street so i have respect for her and i appreciate that they made her a real warrior what i struggle with is is whenever for, in order for a woman to be a hero she must also be sexualized whereas mm. sometimes in a movie the hero could be a crusty, dusty old man. And, you know, but he can be no, okay. the hero. Okay. So I, that's I, my I, issue. Okay. All right. I'll get, I, you know, it's interesting when I'm talking to you because, um, like, having sisters, obviously I'm a man, so I, I look at things the way. You, you look at things incorrectly. Yeah. <laughs> He was looking and, for he was looking for a different word, and that word would have been incorrect. What, 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 it would have been incorrect. You know, whatever you, he was going to say. Look at things the it's wrong just way. One of those, like if I was, <laughs> if I was one of those yeah. big balloons that go up in the air, you would just deflate my <laughs> whole air, and I would just go come back listen, to ground. You know, come back. Said, <laughs> I would have told them not to inflate you. Come back. <sighs> I would have said, "Don't so, put so, that so, one in the prayer." <laughs> You don't need to uh, so, so what, I, what, what, what I'm saying is, <laughs> is that I understand what you're saying, but I've never, it's just interesting. I've never thought of it that way. Just, just, I've always just thought that, and it's interesting because even I know, I mean, obviously I know how iconic the metal bikini is and all that kind of stuff, but it's just, I never contemplated her being a sexual, like an overly sexualized character and not even that's that's what you're saying. I'm just saying, like I've always, if I was to explain Princess Leia to somebody, I would have described her like she's just a, yeah. you know, she she she's she just a warrior. Um, and, 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 even in the affection she had for Luke. So, you know, why is it that Brittany wants to get into that? So let's go ahead and get into it. Why, yeah. Why is it that when mm. a woman is feeling a high level of affection for a person, 
it has to always be shown as like a sexual appreciation. That's the issue. I mean, yeah. because obviously we know, we learn that the reason why Luke and Leia are so at attracted to each other is because it's their sibling bond. It's the force pulling them together. Mm -hmm. We learn that. But, oh. but, but why do they have her, why do they have her first interpretation of those feelings be, I'm going to kiss you in your mouth? Well, see, I, I don't feel like that kiss was passionate. I feel like that kiss was to get a Han Solo because it she was, really yeah. liked You're him. You're right. It's so, was it was more games. of a like, Han Solo, you ain't shit. I like Luke. You thought I was talking about you when really she was talking about him. But she had to make a play to let him know, you think you're the baddest and you're not. I like Luke. Bye. But, so, uh, I, but uh, and that's absolutely what was happening. But I do see what you're not saying in the point of in the middle of all of this that's going on. Why does she have to respond like that anyway? Even if she does, even if she's dealing with these emotions, mm -hmm. yeah. just it's the opposite of how she was when Alderaan got blew up. You know, like right. It's the opposite of that. Now she can't. Janai, Janai, yeah. Janai, you said something interesting that you feel like it was the that there was some attraction there, mm -hmm. but it was more misinterpreted attraction because they were basically attracted to each other because of the force and that mm -hmm. they're in the same you know it's interesting and they're twins like i've never i've never thought of it in that way but that's a very interesting yeah but see i just don't feel like they were attracted to each other i feel like luke was attracted to leia and leia was attracted to han solo and Leia used Luke in that one moment, but, but she, I don't feel like she ever liked him. Like she was but like, she, oh, she but she Luke. felt a draw to him, and she acknowledged. But that. yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. I agree she with that. that because whenever he finally said, "Listen, you're my sister," she was like, "I, I've always known on some level, mm -hmm. you know." And so she, she acknowledged that she had felt drawn to him, and mm. so that, and I, that was obviously the force. And I will just say, like, you know. I don't feel no force with y'all. And, you know, I was just going to say exactly the opposite. <laughs> I was going to say something <laughs> kind and loving. And once, again, <laughs> once again, I am scorned. I was going to say that when, when the three of us are together, even when I only like both of you 10 to 15% of the time, I still feel <laughs> more complete when we're all together. I do. I feel like we're a set. And, um, yeah. and, and, and you, you know, we've all heard those stories of like, oh, this girl was my best friend my whole life. And then I found out we had the same father, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's those kind yeah. of things of like, there is something about, um, there is, I think sibling connectivity is real. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think it's I real. I agree. I, I agree. I, I think it's definitely yeah. something you have to experience mm -hmm. to really, to really know it. But, but um, so that whole, uh, let me ask you this, the, how that story went together, uh, Luke first seeing Leia on the hollow, you know, the hologram that she sent and, you know, then the meeting and then all, do you feel like that storyline between Luke and Leia flowed, um, uh, it flowed correctly you, or, or like seamlessly or do you feel like it was kind of pieced together movie by movie? So in other words, when you first saw the dynamic in the first movie, do you feel like they were able to um, make a natural progression to them being siblings by the end of the last movie? Or do you feel like it was being cleaned up along the way? Mm. Interesting. I, I, you know, well, I will tell you this, there were, there was more than one occasion where somebody said, there's another one, you know? And so, yeah. the, so I will just say that I kept looking at all of the characters to try to see who was this other Jedi or like this other 
entity that was going to be important to all of this. And it did cross my mind that Leia could have been also of a Jedi lineage. I didn't immediately put together that they were siblings, but there was something so gangsta about her mm-hmm. and her commitment to, to the thing. I mean, I, I felt like she had some kind of special connection to it. Um, and, and so I guess in that way, their relation, the evolution of the relationship, it didn't feel awkward to me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What did you think, sis? Did it feel... The only reason why it felt a little awkward, but I definitely could understand it, uh, was because I thought Princess Leia was older than Luke. Luke, when we met Luke, he was just graduating from high school or whatever it's called there. And I was like, this is Luke's mama. Like, I I was like, this person looks older than him. Well, yeah. Yeah. Carrie Fisher, she was an interesting pick, I think, because that but that was probably something else. I mean, she's not like um, a supermodel; she's just a beautiful girl. You well, know? well, it wasn't even about her. And she has a look know. that is an age like she has a long right. It, she just looked more mature than yeah, him. She does, and I was, and he looked boyish. Yeah, and then how she carried herself, the things she did, you know, and I was just like, she is older than him. That that's how that's how I was taking it but Mm -hmm. then you know i found out that was real wrong so they was in the womb at the same time okay well i i feel like i could talk about this because of you all saw in the um the the return of the jedi the last one where they did this where they showed the force ghosts and you saw anakin skywalker yoda and Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kenobi I cry. Um, so I feel like I could talk about this because that scene was at the end. But uh, first of all, it wasn't originally like that. But um, basically, if you're saying that that's the form of Anakin Skywalker when he had Luke and Leia, and then we see how his head actually looked once you took his helmet off, that change in time is way bigger than uh way bigger than Luke and Leia's age you should say like Luke and Leia are supposed to be teenagers or whatever but Anakin looks way more than 20 years older than he did in that force ghost you see right. what I'm so yes. when he was a force ghost he looks basically like a 20 year old and then when his mask is off at the end of, you know, uh, Return of the Jedi, yeah. he's like a 60-year-old man. But that doesn't uh, seem surprising to me because he's working with the dark side. I mean, uh, surely that's not a plan for, like, top-notch aging. I mean, <laughs> you're running around being super evil. Strangling just, people, but not strangling yourself. Mm-hmm. You didn't yeah, and, and, and also, your own mission. Also, we don't even, we never got a reason why you know he's even wearing the mask and all of that. Maybe that's something that's in the prequel. Yeah, but, episodes but, one through three. Yeah, I mean. That's why I got to watch him. Yeah, he's been through something. And Something's so going on. that is, that, that, that didn't even strike me as like not having <laughs> continuity because it's like, yeah, you, you, you're the dark Lord. You're, you're evil. You're not, you shouldn't look great. You know, yeah, no. <laughs> you, know, you know what I love about that so much is that you sound like a Star Wars fan already. It's like you, that's <laughs> like, like full, yeah, full. I have full. strong feelings about every single part of these uh, movies. Okay, all right. So, and ever since I watched them, I have been walking around saying hmm, the Force whenever stuff happens. Just so you know, because I'm now gotcha. noticing the connectivity of all things. Uh. Oh, so yeah. what what did you what did you like best? What did you <laughs> what did each of you like best about no let's let's mm. let's start with opportunities for improvement as mm-hmm. we used to say back in my corporate job. But um what what do you what were the things you didn't like about the movie, mm-hmm. the, the the trilogy? If you could think of anything. Well, I did have a thought to myself of like, 
is it is a trilogy good when the movie can't stand alone or is it good um when they can stand alone because i don't think like for example i i don't think you could you could just watch empire strikes back and appreciate it without watching a new hope mm -hmm. And I and so I feel so, but again, I don't know if that makes it good or bad. I mean, maybe that's what makes a, a good tr a trilogy good is that you got to be in it for the whole thing, and you need you need all the pieces. Um, so that was that that to me was something that struck me as an area of opportunity, you know, because like for example, in Empire Strikes Back, the the movie opens and we're like we're in the action. I don't know. It's just I don't mm -hmm. know. Just they they really felt like all parts of one movie. They didn't feel like three standalones. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it but was, you, you don't, it was a note of strange, like, okay, I got you. I don't know. And then one thing me and Brittany talked about several times since is like the, the lack of diversity. I know Listen that here. was a chip on your shoulder, sis. Oh my gosh. I was just about to say, you already know my point. Yeah. Are there no black women in this galaxy far, far away? But there's everybody else. I'll take that a little further. I don't think there's any black people, <laughs> very many black people, period, or Listen. women, or, or women, because, or because women. Yeah. in general, because when you, when you think about it, it's something that people talk about all the time. But you know, the only I mean, you can is Leia. You know, it's not <laughs> yes. And I saw one little woman walking around them hallways when they were running around evacuating the the good side. I was mm -hmm. like. Where is the where are the ladies? Yeah, but no, no I would ask no how people. people would know except for Billy D. <laughs> there, which he was trying. How are you trying to get with Princess Leia on site? You don't know anything about her anyway. Well, that's another podcast. That's a whole nother situation. Mm -hmm. But when I saw that the first, so you didn't like how he was represented. He looked like a little playboy, but I guess that was Billy D. In any movie he was in, right? Mm -hmm. Smooth. Um, but I will tell you what bothered me was how the first time we see a woman of color who looks like a woman of color, not just because she was green, but because she looked like a black woman that was painted. There were three she, of them. She, three of three them. Of, well, well, the first one, before you see the singers, she is in chains. Yes, she is. And she is a dancer. Mm. And I was like, what in the frack and neck bull is going on here? And then she gets thrown to the beast. And she gets thrown to the beast. And then the other two, the other three are women of color who are background singers for a frog. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? And they're all painted colors too. None and of them brown or black. They're all painted colors. They, you can, you know. So just seeing only black women or women of color as the entertainment and then also disposable, mm. that was a very like, how i'm sorry how do black people like this this again but i know that you have to dispense reality when you're looking at this but i also have to i can't dispense it to the point where i say to myself someone who is real wrote this and they wrote about a galaxy far far away and they did not include me okay so do should i support you and say that this is a cult classic because obviously i'm not in your galaxy and it took you uh, how many years to the next movie to put me in it? Like, I just... <laughs> well, I, just I, I mean, that, that's definitely, I just that is definitely real heavy. Uh, and it is definitely something that people have to, you just have to not think about that when you're watching Star Wars. In yeah. order for, it, it's just one of those things you gotta let go. A, a lot of movies have, well, things. a lot of everything. But, but I was listen, about to say, that's that, life. Yeah, listen, I was just going to say, it's, you know, it's no, life. I'm not, but I'm not saying, you know, it's definitely valid point. But, but, just, can, I, but can I tell you, I, I like the, the Lando. I thought that character, I, I appreciated him. You know, sometimes, uh, many times, when there's mm -hmm. a, one token person of color, they and this still happens now you know yeah. the word the person their only contribution is like to move story along 
so they don't have an actual storyline associated with them. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, this is now the token friend who's just here so they have a measure of diversity. But I appreciated that Lando and, and Han Solo, they had a real relationship. Mm-hmm. And I also appreciated that Lando had a story that was complex. It was a story of starting out in the galactic streets, you know, um, and then finding himself in a situation where he had an opportunity to evolve and be relatively on the up and up. And power. And, and, and he was doing it. And he was in a leadership role and he was doing a good job. And, um, and then he had a tricky relationship with, with Han Solo, but he was there for his friend. You know, he didn't have to, even as much as he could, he was trying to wheel and deal in the favor of the rebellion. And so I, I liked his character. I thought mm-hmm. if you're only going to have one black, there's a, like, there's a, there's a, there's a version of token black that I can sleep a little better with. And mm-hmm. it's the kind that Lando is. I was like, he's a real contributing character with the whole story. Yeah. I, I so, didn't have any problems. I didn't have any problems with his character. I didn't have yeah. an issue with him. I, I thought he was fine. I, I thought he did well. I was just like, where am I? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm in chains getting fed to this ugly thing? Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Thank you. She, she was so obviously the first Black woman. And she just <laughs> was so clearly a Black woman. That was the thing. It was like so clear, bro. Okay. I, I'm curious, like when you, cause you saw this as a child the first time, you know, we're, we're Brittany and I are sharing our adult reflections on this. Right. I mean, when you were watching this, if you can remember, like in the early years of it being out, I mean, how did you react to these these three movies? I mean, what was did, did you have a feeling about? the whiteness of the movie did you have like what was it no i i what made you love it so much you know just absolutely loved the movies and it was more of um i mean obviously i'm a little little boy liking uh sci-fi and ray guns and spaceships Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff so just from a very basic level Mm -hmm. yeah it ticks all the boxes of something i would want to see on the screen but the other thing was is that when i was let's say um you know eight you know eight nine ten years old when i actually could watch through the the whole movies and really take them in star wars was such a huge thing you know people were dressing up like star wars for halloween people were having star wars theme parties already um there were star wars toys were always a part of my life and Star Wars came out, you know, so long before I would play with a toy from Star Wars, you know, but yeah. it, but just the toys just, so it's like, we, there were people who had never seen the Star Wars movies. We got Star Wars toys. We don't even really know what we're, you know, playing with because it, because it was such a um, phenomenon. But But I'm saying this because I used to love Dukes of Hazard, and I had a uh, Dukes of Hazard uh, muscle car with the Confederate flag right there on top of it. This was one of my toys. Sure. You know, so so, so I'm just saying that at the time, those types of thoughts don't even you yeah. don't think about it. And after it's just been cemented over and over again since I watch it over and over again. Now, just emotionally, it's one of those movies because it was so different and because there wasn't really anything like it and because it was such a phenomenon that now it connects me emotionally to those times, which were very yeah. positive. Mm-hmm. So um, even now, it don't bother me. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. like, like I can notice it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like I, I notice it, I can joke Makes about it, but, but, it's, but, but if I saw this movie as an adult, I probably still would have liked it, but I would have noticed it a whole, whole lot more. I would, it, would, it would have been more of a, a thing for me. Mm-hmm. So, and if I could say anything, uh, just to piggyback on, on what we're talking about as far as the things we didn't necessarily like, 
that is the one thing that I would say. I would have liked to see, you know, we're talking about something that is complete fantasy. It would have been nice to see, like we talked about different shows we're going to watch and stuff like that. I feel like Star Trek did a good job of just showing a world where, you know, yeah. unity, at least in that regard. You know what I mean? Like, like there's other stuff that we're dealing with and challenges, but as far as that goes, it's just a, um, a utopia in that way. But um, of just, you know, racial harmony or whatever, whatever, whatever you want to want to call it. So that, that, that will be the one thing that I, if I have to say, I mean, it's hard for me to say I don't like anything, mm-hmm. Star Wars, but, but if sure. I had to say, if I had to say yeah. something, it would be this. Now, let me ask you on the opposite side. What did you like about the movie? Hmm. No, I have one oh! more thing I don't like. Okay, good. add that because I got I got one more thing I want to add as well. C three PO was getting on my last nerve. Mm. <laughs> Why you don't like C three PO? Because she doesn't because she doesn't like order. She doesn't I just, like order. That's the problem, I, you know. Every time R two D listen here, R two D two, he was on a mission. He really was. Nothing stopped him. See. C D C three P O, that doesn't make it. That's scary. Why are we doing that? Don't do this. That is not what the map. They had to not let C three P O know all the plans because he would have messed them up. So I was like, if I disagree. Somebody don't I disagree. Why, why didn't they shut him? Why they have to shut him down? Because. You're doing too much of this. You're doing too much talking, C3PO. You're doing, you're doing too much talking and you're trying to be logical. You, We cannot be logical in this situation because we are trying to fight these people that have something that could blow up a planet. Well, guess what? Guess what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Guess, guess what you just did? You uh-huh. asked this question. Okay. Some people need mm-hmm. clear, cl- things clarified. Okay. Mm. And also, some people, some people appreciate a process. Oh, it's been articulated. Okay? Huh? And some people appreciate a plan being followed. Okay. Oh. oh. So I think in the case of plan deviations, uh huh, nice to just give it a little rationale. That's oh, okay. You keep telling us how to know six million languages. That's not helpful. Do you know this one language? We're trying to get you to speak to this. That's all I'm asking you, CP3O. Stop telling me about these six million languages that you know. First of all, Stop helping me in this moment. You're it's C3PO again. <laughs> respect for get women. it right. Get it right. Uh, and second of all, uh, thank you. You can't even answer the question. Why I trying to tell somebody about your name? We don't wasted all that time. Like C3PO. And you know what is so interesting? Uh-huh. It, it, it is the C uh-huh. of this world that get things done. Oh, oh, mm. is it? Yeah. yeah. Is it? Well, are, it seems are, to are, me. Are, 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 we oh. able, are we able to oh. create traits from planet to planet without, without, without a translator? Let's, let's, I, let's can do, tell, let's, I can tell you the uh, answer is no. Let's do some comparison. People. Uh, who, who got the, who made sure that they got the message to Obi-Wan Kenobi mm. and made sure that, oh, who was telling him, no, that's not what we're supposed to do? What message are you talking about? r 2 d two said, listen, I was told to get this to somebody named Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's who I'm giving it to. I'm not giving it to anybody else. What are you doing? But why, okay. do, you have to, why do you have to compare them? Why can't they both have their different uh, contributions Okay, and C-3PO was walking in his program. And C-3PO wasn't even ride or die. He almost left R2-D2 when they got stolen. R2-D2 had to be like, yo, you, you just, you gonna go get sold and just walk? And then he had to, and then that's when he was like, oh, fine. He was really about to walk into that house without him. That's supposed to be your friend. Y'all walking around the desert together. Because you know what? C-3PO couldn't understand why he couldn't understand the droids, when they switch ownership, they have a new master. Uh And so he didn't understand people not being in compliance. Right. But to get the job done, 
you cannot always be in compliance. All right. All right. That's okay. I'm, I can't argue with that because that sounds a lot like something I read on Instagram about beast mode. So I agree. <laughs> no, you're right. I'm not going to argue with the top notch exactly. me. Exactly. Yep. I, I, you're right. You're right. You, you're right. You're right. I'll definitely tell you that I, uh, th those are definitely some great points. I never thought of it that way, but yeah, C I, I like C3PO, but I, at the same time, understand every point Brittany just made. <laughs> and, 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 you know, R2D2 through Luca's lightsaber as well. Um, Trying to say, you talk about a ride or die. Why you and look, look, they have look, different look, purposes. Look, <laughs> all right, look, look, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. <laughs> now, I grew up, first of all, the one other thing I wanted to add that about that kind of got on my nerves, this is a short one. Even though I've seen these movies, I, I mean, I literally don't know many times, that. but Luke got on my nerves this time. More mm. than he ever did. He was just, mm. but he was gonna go get some power converters. Like, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you know, like he just got on the earth this time a little more than he, than I ever remember it happening. I, I I don't know why. It wasn't enough for me to put a negative tick in in my mind, but but I definitely um. I didn't got find it. him annoying at all. I found him to be delightful. I thought, look at little Luke trying to step up. And when he was dealing with his, you know, Uncle Owen, <laughs> he, was, yeah. he was dealing with his lack of um, of faith in himself. He was just like, you know, Yoda was telling him he could do it, and he was just like, I can't, I can't. And I just wanted to can say, we talk, can we talk? Can we can we briefly talk about how how Yoda would be dropping them truth bombs on you? <laughs> oh, listen. <laughs> listen. I got to go to my notes because I wrote some good Luke, Luke said, I can't believe this. And he said, and that's why that's you why failed. You failed. Woo! Woo! And there was some Yoda. Yoda. He said something Get like. Get out my business. You said on my pew, Yoda. Get out my pew. He said, there's no about to do it. Do it. No, it's, it's, there is no try. Yeah. He, he said, do or don't do it. There is yeah, no try. Right. <laughs> I said, well, that's beast mode. Yoda, Yoda, Yoda yeah. here get, giving people real life advice. Oh, but, uh, real so not, that, life advice. But, um, but what do you this, think this, about, I have a question for y'all. And then this is something, there are so many, there are things that I, so this category of like stuff I, that you don't, that you think are areas of opportunity. I'm struggling to put stuff in that category because I have affection for the movie. Okay, well, now, let's talk about the good stuff. Okay. Because I, I, you know, I was just going to, there, there's a, is it some, again, it's another trope. It happens in all, the, in so many mm -hmm. movies. Uh -huh, but it's, uh -huh. it's like, it's like the fact that they, that, that, that Obi-Wan and, um, and Yoda didn't just come right out and tell Luke all the information. I found that to be frustrating. Why not just say you have a sibling, you are a Jedi, your father is Darth Vader. He turned to the dark side. Like, why can't he just have all the information? It was well, definitely well, a Tyler Perry moment in the Star Wars movie. That feels well, so un -Jedi. Why are we keeping it secret? Yeah, why do Je Jedi's don't need to keep secret? <laughs> well, there, like, it, there's- Jedi, you well, can't well, family well, secrets. What you're talking about is actually a point of contention. Um, it's always been George Lucas has never confirmed this necessarily 150% but basically the thought process is George Lucas knew how the entire story was going from the beginning which is why he started in episode 4 mm. but like, there's another thought process that he didn't know so like when he was writing the first movie he didn't know that Luke was going to be yeah. Anakin's son. So to me, I can see it like that kind of makes it make more sense to me. Like if you didn't know that Luke was going to be, yeah, you know, like mm -hmm. that, that would make it make a little more sense why they didn't give all the information yeah. in, in the beginning. But yeah. um, in, in addition to, um, 
I think, but let me also say this, is that when we're talking about the hero's journey, particularly in the context of Star Wars, there's a bunch of you need to grow before you can handle certain information. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if, if we just give all this info to Luke right away, he might have just buckled under the whole, you know, uh, sure. wait a bit. Um, sure. or, or like maybe try to see, seek out Darth Vader before he was ready to seek out Darth mm. Vader, which was the whole situation. So like, if we tell you now, you'll try to go over there and now you have, you're weak-minded, you're going to be easier to turn to the dark side. Got so it. it's like, okay. we only have to, we have to prepare you for the info before you get it. Okay. So I can get with that. Yeah. But um, but uh, but also so so yeah. So I'm just uh, I'm all, I got two questions. First of all, I do want to hear more about what you guys liked about the movie. I mm -hmm. do I do want to hear a little bit more about that. So do you have any other things that you wanted to add on, like that you liked about it? Hmm, I liked so much. I like I I always like um a battle between good and evil mm -hmm. yeah and um and i appreciated it and you know and again this is like stuff i'm projecting onto it mm -hmm. but there was something about the empire that made them seem like they were nazis you know or like just or like mm. some known it but almost felt like we i mean there's like when you start when you start reading i mean it was a whole yeah. thing that's that's why they picked the colors they did. Right. So wow. there was something about it that I, I I really liked the way that they embodied the evil. You know, there's so many yeah. ways to do evil. And I was like, they could have made them all ghouls of some kind of animal or something. You know, they could have done anything. They could have been the teddy bears. The, you know, I, they could have done anything and called it the evil thing. But I appreciate the way that they embodied evil. And I was like, this is great because it felt like we were overcoming um, an evil that we all know. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really liked that. I yeah, really that was liked that, that. That that part of it was definitely intentional. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really liked that. I, um, now I've been, obviously like we're talking about, I've been watching Star Wars for a long time. And there came to a point where George Lucas went back and put a bunch of stuff in the movies <laughs> that wasn't there originally. Did, as people who were watching it for the first time, did any of it feel out of place or did it all flow good for you? Cause like for me, there's things that feel out of place because I know that they weren't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. But for someone who's watching it for the first time, I'm just curious to hear, was there anything that felt weird? There was, there were things, I, I caught a couple things that felt okay. strange. Um, but it, it, so I'll give you one example that comes to mind as you just pose that question. Whenever Luke and Obi-Wan Kenobi first go to, um, they go to, and they're, they're looking for someone to fly them mm -hmm. on their mission. Mm -hmm. And I think where they go, I think it's called Mos Eisley Spaceport. And they go there to because they're looking for a freighter pilot mm -hmm. to take them to Alderaan, right? Mm -hmm. And there was clearly a visual change in the movie. I mean, it was like you got there, and before that, all of the everything was a puppet or human, and then you got there, and things seemed like they were graphics. Yeah. So I noticed it, but I also was like, well, on this planet. Like it did, and I noticed it, but it didn't seem wrong. Yeah, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, well that's you know. Did you notice you, this? I mean, I, did it not like? Did it hit you, sis? Um, I would not have noticed it more readily because I was watching the movies with Aubrey. Oh, that's right. And yeah. so he let me know when things were CGI, mm -hmm. but I'm when worse, I watched, I'm worse, I'm but worse. no, but it made sense though because. When Anakin Skywalker was at the end of Return of the Jedi, to me, without Aubrey even thinking about what Aubrey said, he looked separate. 
Right. He looked separate and he looked more modern. And I was sure. like, but I did, but I was just so happy to see him on the good side before he died. I was mm-hmm. like, oh. I was like, oh, he sees all his yeah. people. You know, so I was, I started crying. I was like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> and I was, but, uh, but the just when I saw him, how he looked separate, and then I thought about what Aubrey said. Oh, he was adding stuff, and then I asked Aubrey about it. He was like, "Yeah, everybody was mad when that happened." I was like, oh. "Yeah, I mean, he was the added one." I, you know, I got you. I got you. I mean, I am all for like if you if you watch. Obviously, I'm a I'm a nerd. I'm a I'm a Star Trek fan as well, and there's a point where Star Trek redid everything but they did it in a way that they just updated you know so it wasn't like there was something just cgi'd in there that was so dramatically different and um that's one thing that kind of takes me out of the movies watching them now because all the explosions are so colorful and you know like like you said when they go into the bar and uh just and then, and then they didn't, then, and then, and then, and again, I, I noticed it, but it didn't throw me off. I think right. the first time we met Jabba, he was a floating, like, graphic yeah. on that planet that introduced the graphics. But then when we saw him later, he was exactly. a puppet. Yeah. Exactly. And so it was exactly. like, and that, and that's, and I like, noticed it, but it didn't. You know. and that and that scene wasn't even necessary because he had um already talked to uh Greedo about Jabba going to go see Jabba. So like that wasn't even necessary. Like it right. just you know, but anyway, so that, that that's one thing that, that kind of um gets on my nerves. L- last thing I wanted to ask you guys in it. Um, is now I want you... to say something else I liked. Okay, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I love the Ewoks. Yeah, me too. Before I really realized what their name was, I called them the Little Fuzzy Wezzies. And I loved my Little Fuzzy Wezzies. <laughs> they were so cute. Mm-hmm. And they were so sweet. And they were so ride or die. They were so creative. I just loved them yeah. so much. Um, I thought that they were just great little forest people to have to help them uh, move everything along and to really go ahead and take down um, everything like that. I mm-hmm. thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I appreciated how you didn't really know that Darth Vader was going to save Luke because it's he was so true, sis. He, he was know. talking, he was talking so much smack. <laughs> it was kind of like Luke was like, You love me, just say it. You care about me and you're mm-hmm. happy to see me. <laughs> and he was like, and no, I'm not happy to I'm see you. I'm evil. You're about to go to the dark side. Yeah. So go meet the master. But then when Luke walks away, you're looking out of the window. Longing for your son. I said, you know what, Darth Vader? You're not chicken nobody. But then at the end, when he threw the master down the 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 well, the emperor, the emperor, the emperor. Which, if I can step back and say that was something I did not like. You're the emperor of evil, okay? Like you have all the evil in this galaxy. I'm assuming. Why is it taking you so long to kill Luke? Like, if I'm the emperor of evil, Zap, Luke, you Luke, are Luke is, Brittany. Like, Luke is more powerful than... The force is strong but, with him. The, Luke, Luke I is, know. Luke is, Luke is more powerful than Anakin or uh, the, the emperor. Yeah. Okay. I'll Obviously, the force is very strong with him. The force is strong with him. Yeah. But I'm the That's emperor of clear. evil. I should be doing some other stuff. But Anyway, back to what I was saying. Mm-hmm. I just did not really, I didn't expect for that to happen. And I was happy about that redeeming quality at the end of the movie because him, like, let me see your face and, you know, just, and, but I, I it was sad when he, eyes. yes, it was, so it was, I was like, look at that Luke guy, his daddy's ass, that's what's up. 
So it's just <laughs> and I did wonder, I wondered for a beat whether he was actually dead. Because if he, because I did, because when he first was, di was dying, I thought, hmm, if you really have come back over to the good side and you're already top notch at leveraging the force, you can live or something. I don't something, know. Like I, something. I felt like, and especially since you already know that this is a whole universe of movies, I'm like, oh, maybe they're gonna. He's not dead because he's been yeah. in other movies. But then he had like a Viking funeral for him. You know, right. he, he burnt the body. He was burnt and up. So I was like, okay, so he's dead then. Don't let it go. Yeah, gone. Okay, but he okay. can come back. He can come back as a spirit, maybe the way that Obi Wan and Yoda did. Which he did at the end of Return of the Jedi, at the end of that movie. Can I just tell you all that it's just so, it's very interesting to me to hear you talk about these movies. Because in the Star Wars world, Return of the Jedi is still a Star Wars movie, so it's loved, but it is by far the least loved. <laughs> Of, what? of the trilogy. That's so interesting. And the reason why is one word, Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> and this is so interesting here you guys talk about because if you talk I to, love them. The reason what is why, the problem? Okay, the reason why everybody hates the Ewoks is because That's very hard to believe. That's what I'm going to come to when I go think to about, Star Wars convention. Think about, think about the end of Empire Strikes Back. Think about how dark that movie was. Mm -hmm. Luke, Luke got his hand cut off. Yeah. You know, we, we just found out his lineage. He, um, the, uh, 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 he's caught in Carbonite, uh, Han Solo. It's caught in carbonite. And um, so the first two movies were very dark in a lot of ways. But once they realized the money that's available, they realized, like, look, we need to sell some toys. And so the Ewoks mm. weren't even a part of the story, per se, in the sense that it was something they were thinking about. It was literally something put in there so you could sell a bunch of Ewoks. For and, and, <laughs> and, and, um, and it worked. It worked because Brittany was like, I want to buy one. No, I it, literally, it, it, def it definitely worked. It, it, I looked up. I looked them up. They're a million watch, dollars now, but I looked it up. But if you watch that scene, man, if you watch those scenes when they're fighting them, like, they weren't even believable in a lot of ways that they were taking down the stormtroopers. I disagree. So, so I, I disagree. I'm just saying, look, listen, they let, let me just say. They were stripping them. They were, let me, let me just Let me just say, like. <laughs> leaping inside. Like, look, 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 when you want, if you ever end up watching it again, and you remember what I say, you'll remember. That you were wrong. The, and yes, I will. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I will like, go back they're, to the they're, beginning they're, of being like incorrect. They, these, these guys got <laughs> on. The store troopers got old armor that is in some ways effective against laser blasts. And then these guys are just coming up with these little arrows, like, and then it, it'll hit a store trooper and I'm like, oh. <laughs> and like, uh, bro, and, I, I just want to point out everything you're saying is making me more and more wrong. So, uh, <laughs> but, but let me, let, but I, I want to, and I want to, I, I, I want to tell you why you are wrong. Okay. <laughs> Definitively incorrect. Okay. So uh huh. Uh huh. Speak think on it. About both of the Death Stars. Okay. These these were built to be completely, completely. I just thought, oh, oh, don't 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 stop. But I just thought of a title that will probably interest a lot of people. <laughs> just, if you title it, you know, you, our review. But after like a colon, like. Why I love Ewoks. Yeah, people might. It'll be or, no, or, 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 or why, why, why well, Ewoks are 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 underrated or something like that. Yeah, I mean because 
we will cause some controversy. How, how did the de- how were the Death Stars taken down? I'm glad you asked. That's a great question. So uh-huh. the Death Stars were taken uh-huh. down because Speak they on were it. they were built to counteract massive, sophisticated attacks. And guess what? It was like not sophisticated the way that they took them out. So sure, your armor is like good with lasers, whatever. You ain't ready for an Ewok era. Okay. okay. Oh, look at you, that big you? monster dinosaur that thing walking. And oh, look, I tripped you up. How was it that y'all are the powerful people on the planet and a rope tripped you up? Look That's that. your... <laughs> A rope and you obviously your machine is not real awesome. And they had time between movies to put in a fail safe for that. Because okay. they, they had tripped okay. those same machines in an earlier movie. Those same machines were no, still they tri- tripping. They tripped the machines with battle uh ships, not with a rope. <laughs> the point is there's a tripping. They issue. were still issue. tripping. It's a tripping that's issue. A, that's an yeah. issue. They didn't so, go back. They didn't go back and say, "Oh, I remember when we was on the frozen planet that this fell and it fell apart immediately. It didn't get right back up because it had knees." Look, and bro, look, look, it look, fell look, immediately. Look, 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 this and bro, they, they and were broke. tripping them. They were tripping them originally because because the plan that that um, that Luke wanted to do was for them to use a rope. Do you guys remember that? It was like he was going to, somebody was going to deploy a harpoon or something. That is what he did. Okay, right. So but, then it they, was from, but it was from a spaceship. But it was, it, was, just, it was just a rope. It was the same thing. It wasn't just a rope. With. It wasn't just a rope. Well, you're incorrect it wasn't just about that. Uh, because it was obviously the same. And you know what? And the other it thing, was the same concept. It absolutely. Wrap it around the legs. <laughs> and, here, and here's the other oh reason why the Ewoks are, Ooh, I, it's, it's unfortunate so that they aren't being a embraced. Star Wars expert already. Absolutely. It's really unfortunate that it's they're not being embraced. really because, unfortunate. Because the Ewoks, you know what else they represent? They represent uh-huh. unlikely allies, mm-hmm. right? They represent, mm-hmm. listen, and because as soon as we met them, you know, Leia, she wasn't, she, she immediately took the tactic of, I'm not going to immediately make you in. We, we aren't aware of each other, but I'm not going to immediately put you in the enemy category and be frightened of you. I'm going to try to befriend you first. And I thought, well, what a wonderful scene for, 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 the, for this film to teach us all about that, starting out with hoping that community can exist. What about that? Well, I'm so happy you took it like that because I didn't. At first, I was mad. I said, this is a little person, a little fur person that has uh, uh, a spear and you up here trying to give it a snack I said this ain't this is what y'all do on these feed Africa commercials oh I got God. this little lady sitting over here oh feeding the children I said what's happening here I didn't like it I said but uh, you know uh, what let, I, I, let, I, I let, let, let me ask you this let me ask you this first of all I've just heard so many points of thought <laughs> that I've never can I, wait can I share one hashtag Ewoks are the reason why the Death Star is gone. Hashtag e- Ewok love. Hashtag Ewok love. Hashtag Ewok. And I want to say one more thing that they offered. And this is this is also something that is a general pro. It's in my pro list for what gave, what, how I was able to build a section for this, this franchise so quickly. Is that they, all throughout all three of these movies, they had little moments of like comedy. There was always yes. like a little comedy, yes. like either you're laughing at them or laughing with them. That was a, a whole reason C-3PO was annoying. It was so we could laugh like C-3PO, shut up C-3PO. Shut up. No, and by so, the end of it, I was like, <laughs> shut up for real. No, I didn't take it Shut that up. Way. And then the Ewoks, <laughs> they were so delightfully funny. I got to tell you. I they appreciated were. it. I appreciated it. So I, I don't know. That's very. Yeah. That's very. And I'm, look, look, I'm happy look, you look. brought that up, though, in for an intersection between CP3 C3PO and the. Ewoks. Brittany, his name is really not that hard. It is. She's not no, trying. I'm, She's not trying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. C3PO and the Thank Ewoks. You. Listen, C3PO. We just need. They think you're a god. 
They're about to cook us like oh, we are Sunday that's dinner. Dead. That's another good one. You that's, are about to cook us. That's another good one. We are I'm your Brittany. friends. I am your master. I am telling you, C3PO, tell them you're a guy and tell them to let us go. Oh, I'm not set up for that programming, Listen, sir. Listen, that, not... that was his response when other no. people said it. When his master told him, yes, it's true. No. When Luke said, tell him you're a guy. He he got with the program. Yes, he, did, he not, did. did not. He did not get with the program. Luke had to use the force to make his chair levitate. But no, he no, was not no, 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 the no. only. He didn't no, get he, with the program. He, he, he no, did. He did get with the program. He did get with the program. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. because in the scene. Yes, he did. Watch. I'm finna go and, watch it. Listen, watch it again. It, it, watch it again. The, and then you'll be wrong like all. In the scene. In the scene. <laughs> the, um, they're about to get cooked. So they're about to. Yeah. And Luke tells C-3PO, tell them if they don't let your friends go, you know, you'll use, you'll be getting angry and use your magic. Yes. And then C-3PO said it in their language and then Luke lifted him up. So he did get in. So the real issue with that scene but is he Luke didn't... taking too long to direct his droid. No, actually, what was happening, they were telling him, and he kept saying no, and it's like, oh, no, but they're Luke about to book told, us. Luke hadn't told him. And so much his master of hadn't him, told him. Uh, so much, even when his master told him, he was still backing up against them before he actually did it. Not and true. then, and then, that's why the little Ewoks looked at him like, what? Nah, we still no, you're, there. You're, <laughs> listen, you know I've been on your I've been on your side with the C three PO thing the whole time. What what even though I like C three PO, but when you're making a wrong point, it takes away oh. from, from the validity of your okay. other points. Maybe I missed him agreeing with him, but I was just like, you were probably in okay, were, okay. You were probably too busy, again. too busy hating in the dancery, which is what Mary J. Blige asked you not because, to do. And because waiting on C three PO, that's why I have to watch movies alone because I talk to the screen and I have to keep rewinding because I'm up here getting mad. I'm like, your friends are about to get cooked like a rotisserie chicken. Just say I'm a, I am the god, like. <laughs> Have you have you guys ever seen Apocalypto? Yes. Yes. You did? I love that movie. That's the way I would have liked to see Empire Strikes Back is the same storyline, but the indigenous people would be like the people in Apocalypto. Oh. That's what I would like to see. I would have liked to see some real deal. Like imagine seeing yeah. imagine seeing a stormtrooper on a patrol somewhere. And then a spear just comes through his chest like. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, you know like yeah. that. That's what I would have wanted. You know, to I'm not. That would have been good. Hear, I'm not surprised to hear that from you, uh, because I, I, I <laughs> you know, what the Ewoks embodied, which is uh -huh. something that Aubrey continues to struggle with. Uh huh. How you show people love, okay? Exactly. Bro, it's love and that's why the ewoks were just perfect and delightful because and because they were underestimated they were and unexpected and they were love and they were always like to go with the expected things right guess what people expect them why do they have to be all why, why would they have to embody like evil vicious you know personas to be a well, no. warrior. Well, now, well, listen, and they listen, were in Apocalypto, they Friendly. weren't evil and vicious. They that was just them protecting that, their land. They weren't evil. That's, that's the point. I wouldn't, uh, want them, I wouldn't want them to be evil but, and vicious. I would want them to be highly adept to um, fighting mm -hmm. in, in this environment. And But see, the thing was is that the Ewoks weren't put there for the story. They were put there to make money strictly. And that's why it's just, for me, you know, like that, and, and just seeing them, you know, throw rocks and, and they just get hit. That like, oh. was, yeah. like, no, like, like, I, that's no just, I thought, take that armor. That's what I thought. Uh, your, wait, armor, it, your armor wasn't ready well, for that you know what? Rock. You know what it takes me back to when we were talking about Sounds of Blackness earlier? The bigger they are. 
the heart of the wow. <laughs> That's what ladies, I was and gentlemen, ladies and you gentlemen, you ain't as tough as you think you are. <laughs> la la ladies and gentlemen, there's the jazz because that was <laughs> so random that I don't even know what to say. So random. I, I, wow. And you I know what? And I can I tell you, I, I I'm happy that I mean, I think the three of us very minimally debrief this movie before the, before we're this recording right now and I'm happy about that and I also am happy that like we resisted the urge to like google and like go super deep yeah on what on what the 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 scuttle yeah. is because it would never have occurred to me that the Ewoks were people ha were problematic for people if yeah. I had sat back and just guessed about what could be scandalous in the Star Wars fan community I would not yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that either. The things that the thing that people, if you're talking about the original trilogy, first of all, it's the Ewoks. Like if you ask anybody what they hate, wow. it's gonna be Ewoks. That's number one. And number two, I'll tell them all. Uh, is is gonna be, but it's gonna be very interesting because I like I've hated Ewoks for so long that it's just mind-boggling to talk to somebody who doesn't hate Ewoks. But, 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 well, I cannot wait to have my first offspring and dress them up after they learn how to walk as an Ewok and say, your Uncle Aubrey loves them. Listen, I, I will love your Ewok child <laughs> just because <laughs> I don't want to give them any type of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. but it's definitely going to greatly reduce the time I want to be around them. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'll be can very I, nice. Can I tell you all there there was one thing, um, and it was actually right before we started recording that I just had to look up because it just did not make any sense to me in the world. Mm. I have to tell you all, I did Google something. And it was about why uh James Earl Jones was not listed as a star. Because I'm looking at my notes. And the stars of these movies are Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher. There's even a point in the movies where they'll list for starring like um, the guy who played Obi-Wan, uh, you know, they'll list him as a star, but they never listed, they never listed James Earl Jones, the voice of Darth Vader. And I found out something very interesting. He rejected, like he, they, they, were intending to give him an actor credit and they were intending to give him points on the movie but he felt like his role was more special effects and he requested a uh, upfront payment rather than points on the movie and he wanted credit for the for that role to go with the person who was physically in the body not mm. his voiceover and so it was it was choices he made and part of it, I read, I read a fan thing about it, and then I read a more credible source. And in both, and in both cases, they were both saying like he made those choices with integrity. It was like I consider the role that I'm playing to be a special effect, and I don't consider, and I, I want credit for that role to be the actor who's actually on the screen doing all the work because his his whole for the first two movies the totality of his time and energy it was something like two and a half hours or something and he got like seven seven he got like seven thousand or eight thousand dollars for it wow. um which in 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 today's money would be about twenty seven thousand dollars so that's all he got from a dollars and cents perspective when his voice is now the iconic voice of of bad guys. Yes. Because... Let me tell you something. I don't think about that little shriveled up face that we saw no. in the Return of Jedi. I'm not thinking about that little shriveled up voice. I'm think thinking about what was in this mask. Yeah. Yeah. So th I just thought that was really interesting. You know? Now, can yeah, you, I, I would, I would can actually, you do a reclaim you, in my time? Can if you, you reclaim email me, my time? Email me those links. Yeah. I, I'd, actually, I'd actually like to read those. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, but isn't that interesting? That he, very, very like, you, interesting. You can't think of Star Wars and not think of James Earl Jones. Well, I mean, if you're if you're thinking about the top movie villains of all time, 
Absolutely. But Darth Vader has to be in your top. Period. Three. Absolutely. Then, if he's not number one. But Period. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, did you guys yeah. notice, did you, watching the movie, did you notice any references that you didn't get before seeing the movie? Because, like, you know, there's Star Wars references everywhere. Everywhere. So, so was there any point in the movie where you saw something and you were like, oh, that's what they're talking about? Je- so for me, that was the Jedi mind trick. Uh, I always I always had um, a concept of what the Jedi mind trick is. It's to make you do what I'm telling you to do. But I didn't realize that it would come in that way when we saw Obi-Wan Kenobi literally saying everything <laughs> first and then the stormtrooper would say it like oh those aren't the androids we're looking for oh those aren't the androids we're looking for i was like what wait <laughs> so i didn't realize that that's how the jedi mind trick actually worked gotcha. um so but so it was fun it was fun i kind of seeing that i did i did know that that was how the jedi mind trick worked but guess where i saw that i learned it from watching the big bang theory uh, uh, if it had not been for watching the Big Bang Theory, I wouldn't have understood uh, okay. that. But if because were, they, to, because it was told. so prominent in Big Bang Theory as a recurring thing, I expected to see it in the movie many times. But it was only one time that Obi Wan actually used that particular Jedi move. It was only one time. Well, so well, well to be fair, to be fair to the Luke, they do it as well. Um, oh, that's right. The, mm, yeah. That's right. He, he did sure it once. Did. So to twice they used that. But, right. but yeah. Uh, yeah, if you were to tell any of the characters in um, Big Bang Theory that you like Ewoks, I don't think they would be friends with you. <laughs> Man, they... that's bananas. What? Because like the... even, even if you look, look, even if you look at the Rotten Tomato scores of these movies. The first one has a near perfect score. The Empire Strikes Back has the best score. And then it drops off pretty dramatically for uh, Return of the Jedi because. Because people are haters. Wow, that's really interesting. People, it's so unfortunate that people don't understand a fun loving predecessor to the Teletubbies is amazing. They don't get it. That, that that should be that should be the title somewhere in there. Ewoks are underrated or something like that. Yeah, we or can my, put that. We can put that in. Ar- arguments for Ewoks. <laughs> Ewoks, the true stars of Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so frustrating. Yeah. But um. All right, so I think it's time for us to to uh vote. Mm-hmm. So just to just to remind everybody of the voting system, Star Wars, the original trilogy can get up to three lightsabers, up to three. We each have a saber to bestow. That's right. They can get zero or or they they can get get... one, two or three. So I'm going to go first because I think mine is the least. Uh, Obviously, Star Wars will always have a lightsaber for me. May the force be with you. Also, mm, that's, al- deep. that's good. That's good. And I will just say because of the wonderful, wonderful success of the war, um, and again, lots of credit going to the Ewoks, I will also, also, I will also give, I will give it a lightsaber. I'll give, I'll give the original trilogy a lightsaber. The original uh, trilogy, all right. I will. Um, Can we do half sabers? I was no, just, I was, no, 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 like no, 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 I no, no, was just no legitimately half. about to introduce. <laughs> you must have felt it in your spirit I that I was about to go for half. I felt it too. Just. Nope. It's you know what? Like what, what, what it, bro, bro, what did Yoda say? You do it or you don't. What is it? Uh, there, it it's not that. that. He didn't say that. And I, bro, I would like you to Say it in Yoda's voice. Thank you very much. That would help me yeah. to remember. That would help me as well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I don't even want to say it at all now. 
there it is, would help. There is no try. There is no try. All right, all right. So no, we we it's either iconic or it's not. That's how we got it. Classic, iconic, yes or no, sis. What is what is the Britney Wright perspective? <laughs> um, because I do want to see the rest mm. of this. <sighs> this is so hard for me. It's mm -hmm. so hard. I'm, but I'm, I'm already I'm already shocked about what you're about mm -hmm. to say. I, I'm going to give it a lightsaber. What? There we go. You, you, just, you just Darth Vader. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Listen, I gotta keep you on your toes. I gotta keep you on your toes. Oh, sis, even with all the, the lack of people of color, the black lady getting thrown to the beast, you oh, gave it a lightsaber, sis. girl. Because oh, wow. Because I want to see, and it's hard for me because it's the, it's like, oh, to say it's not iconic, but then still want to see the rest of it. It's like oh. those two things don't correlate. They do not. Look, look, and they look, don't look. correlate. They can, don't. I tell you, can I tell you, I respect that rating. I really, really respect that rating because that was a deep dive rating. Yeah. Listen. She went in so. for that. And I really, I wanted to, you know, I found, I wanted to play the star. <laughs> The Star Wars theme song. Yeah, that'll definitely get us demonetized. If <laughs> yeah. this ever gets monetized, that will certainly. All right, I won't. So, now, next time, if you want to sing the music, you got to learn it and just sing it. <laughs> I did sing it earlier. Yeah, but you did was... a great job. Okay, it was awesome. <laughs> it's job. so hard when you have haters right. when when you're when you're part of the Ewok family. All right, so we'll. well the, so the, right next, perspective, the right perspective, the right perspective on the original trilogy. Three out of three lightsabers. Wow. Star wow. Wars, the original trilogy is Whoa. iconic. Wow. All right. Excellent. Now, um, I have never seen Love and Basketball. And I'm saying that as a generation Xer, who grew up in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, you did. And so uh, Brittany felt as though that was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, let me tell, let's just really take just a smidgen of a second to discuss <laughs> that atrocity. And all of the blackness on the planet of the earth when things in the 90s were popping for us in rom-com land. Mm. How dare you? How dare you in the, in the blackness of all of things not have seen such a pivotal movie such as Love and Basketball. That it's means bananas. whenever you hear this, uh -huh, it doesn't oh, no, mean I, anything no, to you no, other no, than no, it's Maxwell. I love the soundtrack. Did you? How dare you love the soundtrack and not know what the sound is tracking? Right, look, 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 look. Well, I have, this I have, have, know I what have, the sound is tracking. I have you know what? You agreed. all, you all, you're, this is an owl. We're going to pick this up next podcast. Okay. okay. I agree. I agree to see. For people to know that Aubrey is wrong yet again in the next podcast. Again. Uh, we already see that. He is missing out. He's not making good life choices because he hasn't seen it. And he's been making poor life choices since the 90s, as we can tell. As we can tell. It's so, right. well, yeah, can, can, I can't well, believe well, you haven't Listen, seen if it. Darth okay. Vader can get redeemed right before the end, so can you. I believe in you. I, think, <laughs> I believe in you, bro. You, as, as you've been doing for the entirety of your lives, you've both exhausted me. <laughs> I am beaten emotionally. Um, maybe an Ewok. And, and hmm. So they're very helpful. I they're think I helpful. think I think the way that you should, I think the way that we should uh, end the podcast for the foreseeable future is you guys doing your buy. Doing our what? Your buy, the buy that you always do. Oh, oh, bye. bye. <laughs> All right. 
This was fun. And all Love the minds are clear. Love you too. Okay, uh, this is it. All right, I'll let y'all next time. All right. Bye, bye, bro. Thanks bye. for listening, everybody. <laughs> bye, you guys. Bye.